front of you standing a very happy man, not just for being here in Jer Jerusalem, but uh, this assignment they gave me to tell something about greener dredging that has a rather significant implication because there is no greener dredging without green dredging. So we are already green and I think it's, it's important uh, to recognize. Um, but the connotation of dredging is not that positive. Um, coming from the Netherlands, when something is uh, really bad, they say that's bagger. And bagger is synonymous for dredged material. But even in English, when they say he's dredging up something, it always has to do with some bad things. Uh, you're more or less involved in the port industry. Maybe you know a little bit what dredging is all about. Uh, but um, I will, hopefully I will make clear to you that uh, we are a rather green industry. Um, to start with this, does anybody know how much material is not contaminated on the dredge material? And I suppose it's a rhetoric question, you probably <coughs> don't know. 90% um, of the dredge material, uh, according to experts, is uncontaminated. Uh, natural undisturbed sediments and can be used for a very wide range of uh, uh, purposes. <coughs> to give you a short overview of what I'm going to talk about, uh, first a small introduction on IDC, then where we are coming from because we did already quite a lot on uh, green aspects of uh, dredging, uh, the status of dredging uh, uh, today and uh, where we are going in the green future, uh, some uh, developments that has commenced already but will be of much more importance in, uh, in the near future. And time for question and answers, I doubt. Uh, IDC, who is IDC? IDC is a uh, trade association with only 11 members, 11 main members, but about 100 uh, subsidiaries all over the world. Uh, and to become a member of IDC, you must have 25 million of seagoing equipment. Uh, you have to be privately owned. And uh, third of all, you have to work outside your own country region. You have to work internationally. And not for the last, but for the second uh, requirement, CCCC, as a dredging company, is placed outside uh, the circle. They can't become uh, a member of IDC. They are state-owned, uh, and they can only become an uh, observer status. IDC is uh, an association working on the PR and PA of uh, our dredging uh, work. And as such, we are dealing with perceptions of dredging. And as you may know, uh, your, percep your perception on a certain subject very much depends on the perspective you're looking at it. And if you read these two sentences, Zalul is uh, one of uh, the leading environmental NGOs here in Israel. And the Volcani Center is the uh, research institute of the Ministry of and they conduct most of the research, uh, uh, agricultural research. Uh, but when you read both texts, they look at the same reality, the same Kishin River here in Israel. But the perceptions of reality might diverge nearly 180 degrees. Uh, and I hope that uh, at the end of uh, my short speech, uh, your opinion on dredging might converge a little bit uh, with ours because we think we are already working in a green way. Uh, having a short look at, uh, at the past, uh, in 1997 IDC started with uh, publishing five booklets uh, on the environmental aspects of uh, dredging. They were brought together and updated of course in this book and maybe some of you uh, have it on the shelf environmental aspects uh, of dredging. Um, so the green movement and green dredging is going together already for quite a long time. 
Uh, in the past, a few uh, innovations uh, were uh, established, and one of them was to increase the dredging accuracy. And it was in order to decrease the dredging tolerances, so that you don't need that much dredging to realize the depth you need. Uh, and with less material dredged, there is less uh, material in the water, less stability, and with that an increase, uh, uh, an increase of, uh, sorry, it's an increase, but I meant decrease of the environmental impact. The second one is the uh, improvement of equipment and the hull shape dedicated to the specific projects we are working on. Um, this improvement has resulted in a substantial decrease of uh, oil and fuel use and emissions, carbon dioxide emissions and fuel use has a one-to-one -one relation. So we improved uh, the uh, processes of the dredging industry and with that uh, two elements. First is uh, less environmental impact and of course also a reduction of cost and for you maybe lower tender prices. A major improvement was made by the development of the green valve. So first you, you see here the water discharge of the overflow was above the vessel, then it gone down to the bottom of the vessel. And with that improvement uh, there was already a significant uh, reduction of uh, sediments uh, into the water. You, you see here, water going down through the overflow, water sediment finds, and air of course, the larger sediments settle directly at the bottom of the sea or the riverbed. Uh, with the air, the small finds go up and spread along over a rather large area. Uh, and that has a significant impact, of course, uh, on turbidity levels. With the development of the so-called green valve, there was less air entrainment through the overflow. That man means <coughs> that a lot more sediments settle at the bottom of the sea. Less fines go up to the air again, uh, and there is a reduction of uh, uh, spreading sediments and fines over, uh, over the area. Uh, less fines, less turbidity and increase uh, less environmental impact again. But there was more, more innovations in industry, industry. And they are not all invented by our own industry, but uh, the use of a dynamic positioning systems made it possible to dredge much more precisely. Uh, they could stay away of vulnerable habitats, and that was a major improvement. The use of automated dredging information systems. Uh, all manual control was taken over by these systems. And uh, with that, there was an increased density of the dredge material, and again, less environmental impact. And the last is the multi-beam echo sounder. It's over here, you get a clear picture, a very accurate picture of what you have done as a dredger and uh, did these information systems contributed, of course, a lot to the uh, automated dredging information systems. When you look now at a um, dredging vessel, it's all digital information uh, uh, provided to the dredging master, and that makes it possible uh, to, to dredge very uh, precise. But there was, of course, also innovation in the industry itself. For certain projects, and in this case, the Melbourne Channel Deepening Project, very specific dredging equipment had to be developed because it was a project uh, near a very uh, um, a sensitive uh, marine nature preserve, and the dredging company had to deal with rock, but it was not allowed to tip over rock into a canyon uh, because that was a very sensitive coral uh, reef. Uh, developed by the contractor, tested on land, tested in laboratory conditions. Um, it was for them possible to execute this project without harming uh, the environment. But it was not only uh, this so-called river dragnet 
It was also the dredging process uh, that has to be adjusted because the dredging vessels has to sail away from the canyon. So that was not just, not just the optimal dredging uh, course. Um, suction imp of improvement from uh, uh, the suction uh, pump um, had also contributed uh, to a very uh, uh, effective process. Another adjustment to the working process was that after 24,000 cubic meter dredged material, the dredged area had to be cleaned from loose material. That was checked by video, and it was discussed yesterday also uh, informing your stakeholders. The results on this video were also available to the public, so it was a very transparent uh, uh, process. Of course, this costs all quite a lot of money, and people from Australia know that the Melbourne project, I believe they had a nearly unlimited budget, um, but it costs money, so taking care of environment costs you money, and it can't be done by just a regular uh, dredging uh, company. They need a lot of knowledge, well-educated people, well-equipped vessels. Uh, it can't be done by every uh, company. Then I come to a few developments that has commenced already and of, we think will become of much more importance. Uh, the last one, building with nature, uh, is not only embraced by the industry, but is an initiative, the result of an initiative of the dredging uh, industry. Um, and we expect quite a lot of it. First, early contractor involvement, and it's literally what it says, just involve your contractor in an early stage of your project. We think that can be very beneficial to you as a client of the dredging companies. Not just for a regular maintenance job, but if you have a very uh, complex capital dredging project, uh, new infrastructure to be made, then we think that the the knowledge and experience of the dredging company can be of uh, great benefit for, uh, for you as a client. For you as a client, fair, the, the, these capital projects are very often a once in a lifetime project. For my members, it's their daily bread and butter. They're doing it every day and with respect uh, to uh, consultants and I don't want to offend any of the consultants uh, here, here present, uh, and some of them I know. Um, but consultants have uh, two favorite activities. The first is copy, and the second is paste. And they don't have the real experience and knowledge um, our members have. And for that, it, uh, it is very beneficial to involve them uh, early stage in your project, uh, you can use the knowledge and experience, but also you get uh, more reliable uh, project schedules, uh, reduction of risks, uh, better cost estimates, and uh, I know I'm biased, but please ask your colleagues from the Port of Rotterdam, or the Port of Melbourne, and maybe there are other ports with experience uh, in early contractor involvement, it really can bring you something in Again, complex projects, not the re uh, regular maintenance uh, dredging project. The other one is the use of predictive models. Time already, so then I'll continue a bit faster. Um, the use of pr uh, predictive models is very useful, but you have to be very careful uh, in using them. Um, People from the US might know the 29 NTU uh, uh, standard for turbidity. I think nobody knows where it comes from, but it is the result not of scientific research, but it's the result of negotiation project, uh, process of fishermen and dredgers in 1967 at the west coast of America. A few years later, it was the same standard used at the east coast of America, and now it's codified in US law as dredging project might not, are not allowed to exceed the 29 NTU standard for turbidity. No relation anymore with uh, the uh, 
local circumstances, the kind of your dredging project, etc. The third uh, development is the building with nature concept, and maybe that's the most important. It's a counter movement against the uh, these so-called hard maritime infrastructure uh, uh, projects. Using the building with nature project, you start taking care of the not 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 even taking care of the environment, but involving your the environment from the very early stage of your project. And you want to work together with nature to realize certain objectives in, uh, in your project. Um, Nature can uh, be, uh, be your friend in, in your project, and it's a long-term research project uh, initiated by the dredging uh, industry, supported together with uh, uh, consultancy companies, research institutes, and universities. Um, it's that building with nature is a Dutch initiative. There is also a Belgium equivalent, Flanders Bay, um, Piam has his working with nature project, um, but where working with nature is only a theoretical concept. Uh, building with nature has a 30 million uh, budget, uh, a research project for uh, four years, and has already been decided, decided that it will continue after 2012. Uh, two examples, an oyster reef. Yes, I have only two slides. Two examples that make it's clear for you uh, what it is all about. The oyster reef uh, to prevent an intertidal uh, area from erosion in the southwest uh, part of uh, the Netherlands. Um, you see here the oyster reef and sand is trapped in the reef uh, and afterwards it's the result that it even prevent, it's a fully prevention of erosion uh, in the area. The third example is the so-called sand engine in front of the Dutch coast. Uh, it was a project uh, to assess the feasibility of a mega nourishment of 20 million cubic meters of sand. The Dutch coast has to be replenished every year again. With this uh, um, project, they want to see if it works, to, uh, if it's possible to have nature working for the redistribution of all the sand in front of the Dutch in front of the coast with this project, the 20 million cube, so that uh, annual replenishment is not necessary. And it also create new information, uh, rare species uh, uh, entered already on this uh, uh, so-called sand engine in front of the Dutch coast. So you have seen a few, of, a few developments in the dredging industry that are green. And we will become greener, of course. Um, it's, a, it's a continuous process. And I hope uh, with this that I have realized uh, at least a little bit of conversion to the perceptions of us as a dredging industry with you as our clients. Thank you. <laughs>